go back to what I was saying, you guys. So then, I'm going to be quick. Okay, I'm just going to mention two points. So, um, what I mean to say by bringing up this point is that in this, the kingdom that we are in, in the kingdom of this world, this earth-like earth, earth -like kingdom, under God, or whatever you ascribe to, there is no reason why anyone should try to usurp you from thinking that you're a queen or mastering your queen energy, right? Because everyone in their own right is a queen, is a princess for this video, right? So if anyone tries to usurp your throne, there's no reason to because you're not actually in like a, a makeshift earthly kingdom. Everyone is a queen or a princess in their own right, right? So what I need you to know is that in those days, if King Solomon saw what Adonijah, excuse me, he saw what Adonijah, the trick that Adonijah was trying to do, and he executed Adonijah on the spot because of the trick that he was trying to do. Imagine you and everybody else who has their rightful place to be a king and a queen, and somebody's trying to tell you you're not supposed to be a queen based on them just being like, uh, we don't want you to be queen, we just want you to be a peasant, right? And it's like, I, you don't get it because um, in your in the kingdom of where we are right now, we're not in Britain, we're not in Israel, right? We're just in the normal kingdom of everyday life. Imagine you're trying to be a, a, a queen in your own right and somebody's trying to usurp your crown for no reason, right? So in those days, if you saw what um, a, a King, King Sol a Solomon was succeeding the throne, an actual throne, he executed... Um, Adonijah on he, they execute and put Adonijah to death, right? So what I wanted to tell you is that if somebody tries to usurp the way you think about your queen energy, because it's just the way you think, right? You're not actually doing a crown where you're fighting like tooth and nail for a crown, but the crown is in your mind and how you exert yourself, right? You have the right to execute the person or put them to death in your mind space, right? Imagine this. You think you're a queen, you're practicing your queen energy, you're asserting your role as a queen, as a princess, you're loving on yourself, you're mastering your energy, and you're doing your life to the best of your ability, right? Imagine you having a, a bunch of Adonijahs, and they're just coming out of nowhere trying to usurp your crown, right? In those days, it shows you how serious somebody coming over and trying to take over your crown was. Imagine you're just in everyday life where everybody could be queen and king and somebody just for no reason wants to demote you down to a peasant, right? So the same way I want to, to, to apply this theory is if somebody is trying to like put you down your throat, you have the right to execute them or put them to death in your head, right? You don't have time to pay attention to people that are just... I don't know, they, they, they want to dethrone you from your queendom, right? You just keep it moving or you put that thought of whatever they're doing to death, right? Because come on, it's not an actual kingdom, it's a kingdom of who you are, right? Imagine somebody so hateful that they want to dethrone you from your queendom in, of who you think you are, right? But remember, everyone in their own right is a queen and a princess, right? So imagine somebody doesn't have anything better to do and they're just going to dethrone them when they could actually just focus on them being a queen or a princess themselves, right? It doesn't make any sense, right? So then I'm going to give you another anecdote and I'm going to end it over here. I'm going to do a brief chase of Gas on Malcolm Clay and I'll end it right now, right? So then I remember I was in, in at my school. This is a while back at CUNY Mech. And this is somebody trying to usurp my crown, right? So I remember I was in my, uh, one of this, like, uh, a long time ago, I was in this, like, accounting class, right? But the thing is, every time I was in this class, there would be another female, another young lady, and this young lady, every time I said something, she'd always repeat everything I would say, right? It was like she would always repeat every single thing I say. I don't know if it was meant as disrespect, but I believe it was meant as a form of disrespect, right? Because everybody else would speak, she wouldn't say anything, but every time I would speak, she would just respond to me as if I was actually talking to her. And the way she would say it would be very condescending, right? So at first, I wanted to reason with myself is, okay, am I reading into something that's actually not there you know am i seeing something that's more than what it is right but as i kept looking into what she was doing 
it was it became clear that she was really being disrespectful right so the thing is every time i say something or i just speak in general she will respond to something i was saying as if i was actually speaking to her right so the thing is i was like man i don't understand i'm saying i'm just talking in general i'm speaking to it's like i hear an echo right and i was like man i don't understand why i'm hearing echo and i'm just I'm not even speaking to this person, but she's always echoing everything I say as if I, I'm, I'm making a joke, right? So I'm like, man, I'm not, I, I, this is not an echo location chamber. Why am I hearing echo, right? There's an echo in the room, right? Every time I'm speaking, she's like echoing everything I'm saying. And I'm like, yeah, this is seriously disrespectful, right? I'm like, I'm hearing an echo. Like every time I think I'll say, she's basically repeated as if she's mocking me, right? And all I have to say is, as anybody, I took very much offense to that, right? Like somebody's going out of their way to make sure they give me a hard time and I didn't do anything to the, to the lady, right? So at first, I, I wanted to tell myself is this, okay, the first thing I want to say is you don't actually want to ever confront anybody unless you actually, um, you assess if they're right in their mind first, right? Because the thing is, I wanted to make sure this person didn't have like a psych problem, right? Um, like some people, like I know a lot of people, they say confront, confront. You actually want to assess certain things, right? Like for example, if I keep hearing an echo, like like the person keeps echoing, I want to wonder if there's a psych issue while they're doing that, right? It might be that just this this it's just school and they think that they're just gonna be like a little like a little pest or something but the thing is i just kept hearing an echo and it got really annoying after a while right so what i did in that situation is i just got right out of the situation i'm like you know i don't even like the class the teacher's boring as hell so i was like you know forget this right i was i was i bounced right i was like i, f I fell back because i'm like what the hell is going on with this it got to a point she kept doing it so much i actually thought there was something seriously wrong with the girl right now what i want to tell you is when somebody's offending you in any way uh you have to do three steps right you could do the first step is you assess okay is this worth my time right and if it's not worth your time you just you bypass you just you go along about your business right the second one you want to think about is do the does the person have like a psychiatric like a psych issue like a, a like a issue where they just can't control like what's going on with their head because some people actually have like an issue where they look normal but it's like they're not normal they need to like or are they a bully or something either one is a psych issue right they're facing depression or something or they have trouble at home it's none of your business keep it moving right now the third thing is you can confront the situation but i really want to say really be careful about this right because some people you don't know if there's actually an issue with with like psych psychiatric issue or you don't know if there's like a bullying thing going on if this person is a violent person they have like anger problems so be careful right because i know a lot of people they want to say confront but you really want to be careful that you're not dealing with somebody that has an issue an anger management issue or they're having like a troubles at home or something or they just can't control like their urges right because some people they just can't control what they how they speak it might be like a serious issue so you really need to assess and think about every situation that's offensive right because that situation was kind of odd after a while right because it was like she kept repeating everything i was saying and it was like clearly to as a chance to just be annoying but after i was like i'm like i'm, like, I'm out of this right because this is this is kind of annoying because i don't know this person this person doesn't know me they don't know like who i am like 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 seriously, to, to, to think about it, I kind of got too annoyed too quickly, which is something I don't usually do. But think about it, right? And uh, uh, one thing I want to say to you guys is when you go to school, high school, college, whatever you're in junior high school, uh, I know it seems funny to start like talking to other people. Like you see like a kid uh, is, is like younger than you and you want to like, you don't know who the kid knows, right? And one thing you want to do is in life, the same when you're going up and you see them smiles going down the same way you're going up and you think you're going to pick on someone when you're going up they might one day be going up and they might be able to give you a hand so you must be very careful 
who you're picking on when you're going when you're in the high position right because when you go down the person's going up they might be able to give you a helping hand right so one thing we want to practice in life is we want to practice integrity right just because other people can't see what you're doing you're in school you're in junior high school you're in high school you're in college and nobody your parents can see what you're doing it doesn't mean you see another student and you want to pick on the other and that is right right especially junior high school kids i don't know if it's because they're much younger it's just it's just how they think you see in junior high school kids will pick on other kids just for breathing you know all I want to say is, in life, you want to practice integrity as much as possible, right? And I know junior high school kids, they're not perfect because they're just little kids, right? They might be having problems at home, like problems going on, but it's not an excuse like when your parents are not there to pick on other kids, right? Like, you, you go to school to learn not to pick on other people's children, right? And while I know you might ha be having problems at home, remember, like other kids are having problems in their lives too it's not good to pick on other children that you don't know you don't know what they're going through uh please do not um you know uh, as a side as a side thing don't pick on other people's children because if you're having problems at home imagine those kids that you think might not be going through a tough time they might actually be going through a tough time right so kids you're in high school kids high school kids college kids please practice integrity when you're in school like i know it's like it's more of a developmental thing like popularity and stuff like that but please practice integrity when you're dealing with other kids you know don't pick on other kids don't do things that if your parents were there you wouldn't be proud to do right just be careful that you don't do stuff like that right so that's basically it for this segment of queen energy the next one i will be doing in the upcoming weeks right and in that one i will be featuring papa mjalu right the full synopsis of papa mjalu so for this one i'm only gonna be like 10 minutes right i'm gonna be um mentioning gaso makon clan which is a hessian film right so gaso makon clan from what i'm seeing the term makon clan i believe it means gosulie right gosulie so gosulie means a guy he um he literally doesn't know how to finesse women he literally has no game he literally doesn't know how to like talk to a woman he just he's just he's just like a ghost he has no he could be married or not but he just doesn't know how to treat his wife with romance right he's like out of touch with romance right you know how in the 90s it would be saying like ebonics and macking how to mack a chick like how to pick up a chick Basically, a Gaston Malcolm claim, I believe the term, or grossly as I believe it is also, is when the guy has no game, right? But it's usually, it could be in with his wife, it could be with his girlfriend. He just doesn't know how to finesse the girl, right? And usually, grossly a Gaston Malcolm claim means he just is like, he's just, he is like unromantic. That's what it basically means. He has no romantic bone in his body, right? So in this film, it stars Messi J uh, and T Wheel and Jezila, right? Jezila is uh, Messi J's girlfriend that he's sending back, uh, back for from Haiti, right? So she immigrates from Haiti to New York in the first one, right? So what you know, what's know about Gaston Michael Clay? It has three, three films, and I believe they were trying to do a fourth film, but I never heard of that one coming out, right? So, Gaston Macaquin 1 is a very good one. It's very cute. But I have to say the second one is kind of long. But the third one is the best one according to me, right? It's like the full thing coming full force. And I believe there's like a fourth one, but I don't know if it ever came out. I just kept hearing it coming out, but it never came out, right? So, Gaston Macaquin stars Messi J, right? So, Messi J, uh, uh, he's like this guy... He's sleeping, he's, but it's mostly, I think it's in Canada. It's done in Canada because the money and the way they keep saying it's in Canada. I think it's in Montreal, I believe. Um, so T. Will and Messi J, they're friends and they live in Canada, right? And it's like, uh, um, in, in between the film, he sends for his, but it's like he's by himself and stuff like that. And T. Will is with his wife, I believe her uh, I forgot her name, but she's like, she's like Ikli, which means she is like advanced. She's like, she's like really um, posh. She's bougie and stuff like that. She's Ikli, she just, she has all the latest gadgets. She's, she's bougie, right? 
So, um, T Will's wife is just she's extra bougie. She's Frenchy. She's Frenchified. She knows French. And it's like there's a there's a point where like um, T Will and wait wait T Will's wife and Messi J are talking, and it's like. He doesn't know anything in French, and then it's like he's trying to like. She's like, "Oh, do you know French?" Like he's she's speaking straight, like straight French, right? And it's like, "Yeah, je connais pas." And he doesn't know anything. He just knows Creole, right? And then like when she, at a point in the in the film, it, she's like, "Okay, I'll just speak Creole because it seems like you don't know if any French, right?" Because because he's trying to act like he does no French, but he really doesn't, right? Um, but then to say something is Messi J's name and the, and the, his wife's name Jesse La, they're straight up uh, words. They're like Haitian words, right? And they're very common names. Messi J means thanks God. It's basically as if you said thanks God, you put it together and you call that his name. And his wife's name is Jesse La, which is, means Jesus is here, but it's as they put it together and that's her name, right? So in the film, Messi J is just basically living as a bachelor and he's just he's just alone and stuff like that, right? And then he sends for Jezila, which is his wife in Haiti, right? His wife in Haiti. And then she comes in and she comes in during the winter. And what ends up happening is that he was living a life where he was just by himself. He was in total bachelorhood. And when she came up and he starts to be kind of like he kind of is neglectful towards Jizzy La, right? He's neglectful in that he wants her to cook, clean, and he doesn't want to, he doesn't really give her any like affection or anything, right? She's basically wasting away. And from what she remembered, their relationship was like in Haiti. He was very loving to her when they were in Haiti, right? So then what ended up happening is that. Uh, she gets to a point, she, she just starts wasting away. She's just basically grooming every single day. There's no gadgets in the house. He doesn't believe in phone, no electronics, no computer. And she basically has no way with the outside world, right? He comes at night and he's like verbally abusive to her. And he's telling her, I expect my dinner to be here. He's basically like a gosulier, like somebody who just wants her to make food. But he doesn't want to do nothing like romantic, like go to dinner, like, uh, you know, be together or anything make out or anything he just basically like wants to eat food and just go to sleep and it's calling a day and if he wants to be with her and that's it right there's no finesse in it right hence the theme of the movie Gaston Malcolm right so the thing in this film that is is kind of interesting is uh by chance Jay-Z La meets up with T Will's wife right the one that is um advanced and she's bougie right and when she meets up to her she's like what's wrong with you why are you dressed like that right so what ends up happening is that that's the whole gist of what's gonna happen in the film is that she's gonna give her instructions on how to make uh, uh messy j comply and how to master being the queen of her life right because I, I believe her name is Anriette. Is her name Angie yet? Angie yet? It's like a, it starts with an A, right? So she's gonna show her how to make sure he buys her a TV, a computer, electronics, buy her clothes, make her like give her money, give her spending money, tons of money, right? Because she's gonna train her on master on how to finesse him, right? And get him to do what she wants to do. And she's gonna in the end she 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 she's gonna show him her how to get him to not be such a gas on my complaint, right? How to stop being a gosulier, right? But as you'll see in the second and third one, the it looks like Messi J you could help him, but he's just a hopeless cause, right? So then that's basically it for the 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 review. It's just like a little gist of gas on my complaint. It's actually a very enjoyable film. What I would say is, if you watch it on YouTube, I think it's because of the licensing rights, you see that they have a bunch of different sounds in place of the actual songs. So, although YouTube has a very good copy of this film, I believe, I think it would be best if you got the original because the original has a full Haitian music onto it. And due to the copyright laws of YouTube, it's been obliterated, but it's been put like this, this, this different type of YouTube music, which doesn't really make sense with the film, right? But all I have to say is, whether you watch it on YouTube or just plain and simple, 
the film is a very enjoyable watch right i have to say again that the first one is pretty good the second one is that it's kind of drawn out because it's trying to explain everything the relationships and everything and the third one i have to say is actually the best one that's on my book three right so then that's my video for today you guys my name is kristani jen have a great um have a great night you guys and this video concludes uh the first part of how to have queen energy and how to master queen energy have a great day you guys see ya hello you guys so you guys um that concludes um the video um on how to master queen energy or uh, how to have queen energy my name is Kristani Jen. Have a great day, you guys. Thanks. So then finally, you guys, this concludes the end of uh, the first part of the video. Uh, first portion and segment of how to master queen energy and how to have queen energy. So that's basically my video for today, you guys. Have a great day, you guys. Thanks. My name is Kristani Shen. Thanks. My name is Kristani Shen.